Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. And it's that time of year where my voice just is horrible. Bear with me. But today we are up here again working on our um, abandoned motorhome. We are working on getting it back to the shop uh, today. So a couple of things. We need to uh, tow it home, unfortunately. There is a diesel uh, fuel leak going into the injector and repair on that, I've read is a pain in the you know what on RV forms and just not something I want to do in, uh, in the owner's front yard. Um, I'm a ways away from all my tools and resources and just, it's time to get it home. It is fall, the leaves are changing, it is getting chilly. It's a brisk 48 degrees this morning. Sun's out, so that helps, uh, but I'm in long sleeves. So we've got to do a few things. We've got to uh, pull back or cage the air brakes if we can get that done. We need to uh, remove the drive shaft and uh, button things up inside to uh, get it home. Now, do I have to do this? I don't have to, but I'm trying to be as nice and easy as I can for the tow company uh, so they'd have less of a pain in the butt trying to get this thing uh, home. I, and plan to drive it, um, it's just not feasible. So we're gonna do the next best thing, have a towed home. And like I said, I wanna try and make it as easy as I can for the, uh, the tow operator. Um, it's my thing, so I should crawl around under getting it buttoned up the best I can. So I've got some tools and uh, hopefully I've got the right stuff to cage those brakes and pull off that drive shaft. And if not, well, so be it. Let's take a quick look inside. So not much has changed. It's still needing to be cleaned big time. Uh, but the big problem I've got to deal with is that. So that needs to all be supported in some way. So I brought some two by fours and some screws and hopefully I can just screw it in, prop it up and uh, wedge it down here on the floor. That's the plan. Um, everything else, it's just gonna get sent. And if something tips over, it tips over. There's really nothing huge or breakable in here to worry about. Uh, so I'm just kind of excited to get this thing home. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna see what I can do here if we can get this propped up a little bit and uh, go from there. Alrighty, well, we've gone ahead and uh, kind of support of this front overhead uh, bulkhead thing for the trip home. Actually, it wasn't that bad. I got, uh, take a look. I got uh, this one big two by four right here. Right, there we go, right there. And uh, that's screwed into the floor. That's screwed into uh, the overhead up here. Got a couple of screws over here and all over here, there's really nothing to worry about. So that's all gone. So. <clears throat> I think we're pretty much buttoned up on the inside again. Take a walk through quick. I mean, imagine this thing being, well, significantly cleaner. And honestly, it doesn't smell in here. There's really no moldy, dirty smell. I mean, it just smells like old dormant camper. Uh, Finally put the mattress down for the first time. There's a, it's like a coffee can back there. Little cubbies back there. It's like, it's like a CO2 sensor, some little sconces or controls for the air conditioning, which does work. Uh, old TV, again, shower. Good old uh, everything gold or bronze and whitewash style from the late 90s. Um, here's our panel here. ND filter. Here's our panel here again, and everything worked. This showed uh, LP. It showed uh, when the pump was on, I tried. Water pump, water heater, generator tried. We tried to kick that off, and it turns. So everything in here seems to come to life. Uh, we already got our max air vents up here on the roof. That's nice. Uh, Black & Decker Space Maker. How long since you've seen one of those? Strapped in a camper. Stuff in the cupboards. Yeah. We're all good to go, right? Not quite. I haven't tried the slide out. I'm not going to gamble with that until we get home. But 
I think we're done inside. This is pretty well buttoned up and uh, now it's time to go work on those brakes. Alrighty gang, well I'm gonna have to admit a little bit of defeat here. While we did get the inside things taken care of, uh, I did not bring a small enough 12 point uh, wrench or socket to take off the drive line. I was expecting something bigger. They're like nine mil or something 12 point bolts, which I don't have anything here for. Um, I was expecting like, even the Challenger's got like five sixteenths uh, heads on it, go figure. So that's a loss, I can't get that off. And I tried to go and crawl under to get the brakes uh, retracted or caged up and I've eaten a few too many tacos uh, to fit under the side skirts of the camper here. I tried to crawl in from the back end uh, under the engine and trans, but again, too many tacos. So made a valiant effort. So that means apologies in advance to the tow driver who's got to come and uh, do their thing to get this uh, ready to be towed home, but everything inside is secured. All of our uh, side panels are secured. Windows are closed, roof vents are closed. All I've pretty much got to do is close up the front door, kick in the steps and uh, head home. So that's what I'm gonna do. Well, we are back and uh, this is not the, uh, the Georgie boy behind us. Funny story, called up the tow company, submit my claim. Legit claim, it's a fuel leak. I mean, sure, the thing hasn't gone anywhere in a couple years, but more importantly, the fuel leak, I didn't want to drive with that. Uh, tow company called back shortly after and said, sure, we can tow it, but policies have changed and your included tow will now cost you $2,500. No, that was not gonna happen. So I went up uh, a couple of weeks ago and actually last, last weekend, yeah, it's time. Yeah, I went up last weekend to cover it up. Buddy Mike came up and helped me, got it tarped up for the winter. And it's just gonna sleep up there for the winter. And I'm going to source that uh, fuel fitting for the injector pump. And actually I may already have a lead on that. So hopefully next spring we'll go up there. We'll dig myself a trench I can roll under it get those brakes caged, released, get the thing moving, replace that uh, fuel line and drive immediately to the gas station about a half mile away. Try and put some diesel in the thing. And uh, then just kind of leapfrog it home. We've got a plan to take um, some roads home that will hopefully get us back here in one piece. So that is our plan for the uh, Georgie boy, not the ending I wanted to have for this right now, but at least there's hope in the spring we can get it home. Luckily, it can stay where it's at. Uh, the uh, property owners, not a big deal, it can stay there, and we'll make it a point to get it out of there first thing in the spring as soon as the frost or the snow is gone so I can get under there and not freeze. Uh, so we'll... Uh, We'll pick this back up in the spring. So I guess for now, we're gonna wrap this one up. Um, if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. Like the series, we are gonna come back, of course, with more videos on this. But for now, we're just at an impasse. It's too late in the season uh, for me to reliably get up there and have daylight and not be cold. And even so, I don't have that, uh, that fuel fitting. So I'm not gonna drive it home anyways. So we'll let it sit, we'll come back in the spring, and until uh, next video, which well, yeah, what's behind me? The Plymouth. That's, uh, if you haven't seen those videos, check the playlist, one of these corners, because uh, we are really close to wrapping it up. I've got plenty of parts in front of me here, and a box elder bug just slid down the fender. Literally, it's that smooth and shiny now. Uh, get this thing put back together, back to the owner, and then we've got more projects coming at you. So, until the next video, have fun and uh, we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.